this holistic approach, it's not only for how do I talk with my coworkers or how do I find happiness in my own life? It's whenever we face a challenge or there's a problem to overcome or we see the opportunity for change, we start by being kind to ourselves and say like, hey, I don't know what's going on with the other person that I'm having a conflict with right now. It's okay for me to feel upset because they said something that went against what was important to me. At the same time, I do not know what they are going through right now. So we also need to be kind to the other person. And that helps us relate to them already in a different way. Instead of being angry at them, we become curious. And then we say like, hey, so let's be present. Like, let's seek a conversation with that other person, trying to understand where they are coming from and also making them understand how their words and behaviors affected me personally. There are opportunities for our work and careers everywhere, if you know where to look. That's easier said than done, especially in our fast-paced and constantly changing world. Marianne Fairmouth is talking to experts, employers, and job seekers to bring you insight and understanding about what's possible. This is Career Can Do, where we're navigating the new work world. Welcome to the Career Can Do podcast, a top global podcast dedicated to helping you navigate the new work world and beyond. My name is Marianne Fairmount, and I'll be your host for this episode. And today, I'm just delighted to have a guest on my show all the way from Versailles, France. Benedict Uman is a coach to a variety of individuals that are into transition. He's an author and career transition coach dedicated to helping professionals survive layoffs and forge their own path towards security with purpose. Benedict helps his clients by offering a holistic solution that emphasizes small, actionable steps instead of trying to overcome challenges with one giant leap. This approach focuses on being kind, present, and open, and making it both simple and effective. Benedict's journey began when he faced a series of layoffs at Blizzard, where he spent 17 years. And this turning point came when Blizzard announced the permanent closure of the Versailles office, pushing him to guide his team through this challenging transition. Without further ado, help me welcome Benedict Uman. Benedict, say hello to everybody. Hey, thank you so much for that warm welcome and very detailed description of what I do and why I do it. It was lovely to hear it summarized in such a way. Thank you so much. Well, it's my pleasure. And I, I'm so looking forward to meeting you in person when I come to Versailles in the very near future. But tell our listeners a little bit about, you've got this wonderful book, The Art of Meaningful Change. Just tell our listeners, give us kind of an overview of kind of what brought you to this point and how you have really made this wonderful transition in your life, but more importantly, what the lessons were and how you learned them to help others. Yes, my absolute pleasure. So the book came together after my time at Blizzard when I told myself, hmm, can I actually prove to myself that my framework of being kind, present, and open works in different shapes and forms? And I always wanted to write a book, but I was never able to. So I started by becoming an author instead of trying to write a book writing five minutes a day. And after three months, the book was done. And in the book itself, it's really all about everything starts with kindness, first for ourselves, but then also other people. And we built on top of that, on that potential for change, on that acknowledgement that we all have value. And we built on that with mindfulness, with presence, being open to putting small actions into place for a greater vision, for a greater goal down the road. And we built that one step at a time and sky's the limit if we do that not only for ourselves, but then also with other people having that inclusive culture, this holistic culture where everybody pulls together and gets stuff done together. Well, I think that's great. That's very, very profound. And as we talked about in the Blue Room, this global pandemic has left a lot of people with having to deal with some kind of change. Sometimes the change has not always been that easy to do. But 
talk to us about why you think it's so difficult for people to embrace career transitions positively. Because change in its essence is always scary. Because it means we're exploring something we have not yet explored before. We're doing something we have not done a thousand times already. And going beyond that comfort zone, leaving that comfort zone, is always, in a sense, scary because there's always something new on the other side that we are not intimately familiar with. The key to me is to rephrase that energy that we have in our body. And instead of saying, I'm anxious of doing that, like, huh, actually, it could be very cool. I'm very excited to be exploring this right now. And you have the same energy in your body, but you look at it from a different point of view. And that allows you to move beyond your comfort zone and actually start exploring, being present, what is out there in the wild that I want to achieve for myself, what is the change, and why do I want to achieve it for myself. And once we have that guiding star, once we have that vision, we break it down into tiny, actionable items and go one step at a time, being kind to ourselves first and foremost, to not put too much pressure onto ourselves trying to achieve that goal within a day or a week when we well know it will take several weeks or months or even years to get there. I agree. And, you know, my dear father, who, God bless him, I just had so much respect and admiration for my loving father who left us many years ago. But he always said, Benedict, no pain, no gain. And he believed that sometimes the biggest growth, the most profound growth takes place when you have to go through some kind of pain. Now, I'm not suggesting that we all want to hurt and feel bad and down this and that. But I think that sometimes when we look at things as a blessing, not a curse. Yes, this thing happened. Yes, after 17 years, you got let go in a job. But then what are the lessons you learned from it? And more importantly, how can you help others with those lessons? So I think your work is so good for these times. And I think everyone can benefit in so many ways from what you've written in this book, The Art of Meaningful Change. So what was the turning point that made you realize you could help others, Benedict? Was that when you lost your job after 17 years or was there something else? Yeah, it was in that time frame. So what is important to know that in France, it goes a little bit different than in the States. When there are layoffs or when there's an office closure, it doesn't happen within a couple of weeks or even on the day. It took about a year from the date of the announcement of the office closure to the actual closure. So me and my team, we were aware the job is going away in a year. And at that point, we'll be on our own. Blizzard will be no more. What until this point was very much our family because we have been there for 15, 17 years and it was really a second family for us. And at that point... I realized, okay, everything that I learned over the past 17 years in Blizzard and from my studies, how can I use that best to help my team get into a mindset where we say like, okay, we are present with the facts. This is happening now. This is happening now. At the same time, we are kind with ourselves saying it's okay to feel sad about it and it's okay to take our time to deal with that announcement and work through the five stages of grief once you're good and ready, I want to sit down with each and every one of you personally, take a look at where is that you are right now, where do you want to go after Blizzard, and what can we start doing right now, little by little, to get you into a place over the next year that when Blizzard closes, you're in a space where you say, awesome, now there's a world of opportunity in front of me, and I know exactly what I'm going to do next, instead of being at that brink and then feeling lost and feeling unsafe and not knowing what to do now that our work family is no more and we are all alone. At that point, I realized that I can help other people with and my passion for helping others grow and succeed, which I lived up until that point as a team manager in Bliss Entertainment, I realized that that same passion can now express itself for me in that form of coaching and leadership development and workshops. So I realized it very vividly for me, and I was able to transmit that to my team as well to get them in a better space 
with a better mindset, better structure, and better tools at their disposal to meet their own challenges that were lying ahead. Well, that's wonderful. Well, as an executive recruiter, I'm hearing a lot more these days from employers and candidates about the generational differences. And I think that this framework, be kind, be present, be open, can really be helpful. So tell us how you think companies could use this framework to create a more engaged and open culture. Because it is so simple, you can use it all day, every day, in everything you do. (laughs) And also this holistic approach, it's not only for how do I talk with my coworkers or how do I find happiness in my own life? It's whenever we face a challenge or there's a problem to overcome or we see the opportunity for change, we start by being kind to ourselves and say like, hey, I don't know what's going on with the other person that I'm having a conflict with right now. It's okay for me to feel upset because they said something that went against what was important to me. At the same time, I do not know what they are going through right now. So we also need to be kind to the other person. And that helps us relate to them already in a different way. Instead of being angry at them, we become curious. And then we say like, hey, so let's be present. Like, let's seek a conversation with that other person, trying to understand where they are coming from and also making them understand how their words and behaviors affected me personally. And as we become open to doing that, the communication, no matter which generation we are from, starts to blossom because we are moving towards each other instead of getting into our silos and ignoring what everybody else is doing. And then we start to understand, ah, you had a completely different perception of that event that was going on. Now I understand why you were so angry with me because to you, it seemed the circumstances were completely different. And then we can go into clarification mode and look at What can we do in the future? What are we both open to doing differently that when this happens again in the future, instead of colliding, we clarify that beforehand. This kind of holistic approach, like in this example, it works with communication, but it also works with the culture building in general at work, where we as a group of people, the values that we live through the behaviors that we display we can be open and honest about and also seek to improve them every day for the rest of the company's life and build something that we all cherish and that we all value. And this to me really is that beautiful thing. It starts so small with just being kind to yourself, but then the consequences accumulate to such a big impact that this holistic journey, it's really beautiful to me. And I see it working in all parts of the company. Oh, I think you're right. We talked in the blue room about, in addition to the, how this concept applies in the career areas, but you yourself just had an accident. Uh, We talked in the blue room about how you were able to utilize this concept, be kind, be present, be open. Can you give us a little bit of information and tell us what happened and how you utilize to help you not be down and sad and really upset. Yeah, no, definitely. So I was at an event and I tripped and fell and I managed to break not only my elbow, but also my wrist, (laughs) which is not much fun, granted. As that happened or after the shock, initial shock wore off and I was going to the first responders who were taking a look at me, I was like, okay, so let's be kind to yourself. Like what just happened, it was like a black obstacle on a black ground and there was no way I could have seen it walking normally. So I could not have avoided this fall. At the same time, I was very present with like, hey, I managed like my entire arm hurts. I banged up my knees. I think one of them is bloodied. It really hurt when I got up. I hope they are not broken. And as I was walking, I realized, yeah, if I wouldn't have fallen first on my arm and then on my knees, if I would have had the floor with my head first, I would have now a broken nose, I would be missing my teeth, or I might have cracked my skull even, because everything hurts, something is definitely broken. So I was kind to myself and present that it could have been so much worse, that as I was walking to the first responders, I became open to like, Okay, good. So this is what happened. There was nothing I could have done differently. Where can we go from here? 
first thing is get yourself checked out, see what the professionals say. Don't worry about what might be broken. We don't know yet. Just be careful. Look in front of you as you're walking to the first responders right now. Just make sure you're not falling again. And then first responders took a look at me. They sent me to the hospital. I had to do several x-rays and CT scans. And yeah, they found out knees were fine, um, broken in two places, need an operation in my left wrist. I just had that done last week. And throughout all of that, like a friend of mine was in contact with me, making sure I was doing well. Like, oh, Benedict, oh, I'm so sorry. This is so terrible. And like, oh, no, I'm fine. Like, I'm doing okay. <laughs> like, yes, it's not a great thing to be experiencing, but it could have been so much worse. And I'm just thankful that it wasn't and that I have an actionable plan in front of me of what I'm going to do next and then and then and then. So yeah, that's how it worked. <laughs> today, how wonderful is that? This concept, uh, this you know, very very succinct concept: be kind, be present, be open, is in this wonderful book that we've read. My office has read called "The Art of Meaningful Change." Benedict, tell our listeners where they can pick up this book. I mean, all this will be on my website, fairmouth.com, as well. But if somebody would like to pick up this book, how can they do that? So it's available for free on my website. And the link is tiny.cc slash big minus three minus goodies and big and three and goodies capitalized at the beginning. Else you can go to LinkedIn. It's linked there as well. You can find it there. And there on that page, you not only find the book and you can download it there as a PDF. You also find a video where we are going through a specific workshop of how to navigate change for career transition and you can work along it with the documentation on the website so there's also very actionable things you can be doing if you feel right now hmm, i'm not sure i am where i want to be with my career i'd like to be more fulfilled or like to have a change in my life this video might also be very hands-on and interesting to you okay wonderful well i always like to leave the listeners we're coming near the end here with two salient points, short salient points they can take with them. What would those two points be? Really what you feel important, not only for career transition, but to become their best self, to have their best life. What would those couple of pointers be from you? At its source, to me, it's always be kind, be present, be open. And the important part there is you need to be somewhat egoistical at the start of that process because you need to be kind to yourself first. And that is the same when you're in an airplane emergency and the oxygen masks come down. You need to put on your own oxygen mask first before you can help anybody else. Because if you try to sacrifice yourself for the good of everybody else, you become the liability. You burn out. You need help from others. So in order to be fully able to help others, please, please, please first take care of yourself. Be kind to yourself. Be present with what's going on in your life, all the good things that you can embrace, but also all the places you want to go, all the goals you want to achieve. And then be open to one step at a time, five minutes a day, do something to move towards that future version of yourself that simply accomplishes that goal as a consequence of who you are becoming. I think that's wonderful. Well, this podcast has been profound. I feel so honored and privileged to have you on the show. I'm so looking forward to meeting you in Versailles, France in a very short amount of time. And Benedict, we will keep in touch. But all of this information will be on my website, fairmouth.com. Check out this book. It is amazing. The Art of Meaningful Change by Benedict Newman. He's a transition coach, a wonderful human being, very holistic professional. And we're just so happy to have him on Career Can Do. So we'll see you all next time. Bye-bye. Thank you so much, Benedict. Thank you. We thank you for tuning in to our Career Can Do podcast. We make no guarantees on results for your particular quest, but we hope you enjoy the information presented. The views and opinions expressed in this program are solely that of the guest or speaker and do not necessarily reflect the views or positions of Varian Fairmouth and Fairmouth and Company. Thank you.